turtle is trying to crawl out of this levee where they have him stuck. He's about to die. I can tell he's got no energy, but every time I grab him, his claws will scratch me. I'm gonna save you. All right, he's, I got him wrapped up like this. So he's still trying to kick a little bit, but he's weak. I'm gonna go put him back in the lake. See over here, they got it fenced in so the turtles are dying. I have video of multiple dead turtles. Just dead turtles. They're just killing turtles out here. There's one of the last turtles alive. We need to protect it, it's stuck in here. With no water and no food, it's not gonna make it long. We're gonna save this guy. We've got him right here, about 10 minutes away from lake accessibility. We're gonna save you. Oh, we made it! Oh, okay. Okay, you're right near the water. Okay, he's so tired, he's so tired. Scratch me. Alright, All right, bye. There he goes. I say. Oh. oh, he's swimming. There he goes. We saved the turtle, baby. The city of Dallas has let so many innocent turtles die because of the way they're damming freaking Bachman Lake. If it wasn't for me, this turtle would have died. He was on his last leg. We gotta save the turtles, baby. Pimp on a blimp. Let's go. My grind so refined, I got no time for no games. Ask yourself why would I make time for you lames? At all costs, cause I'm a boss. I'ma break them off, yeah, gotta break them off. I just want to start off by not introducing the show, but saying that uh, not all heroes wear capes. Sometimes they wear blue blazers. And today I was a hero when I saved that turtle's life. And I'm going to be speaking at the Parks and Rec meeting at the uh, Dallas City Hall very soon, and I'm going to yell and scream at them for all of the dead turtles that they caused with their terrible damning construction. Okay, now we got to get into the show. Welcome to the Prime Time with Alex Stein Show. I'm your host, Alejandro Stein. We have the lovely Lila Hart in studio. Welcome to the show, Lila. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being here. We also have the legend himself, Hotep Jesus, on the show. To tell us about what's going on with Ben and Candace, tell us what's going on with these OnlyFans girls finding Jesus, and a plethora of other topics that only Hotep Jesus can legally comment on because he's African American. So we're going to uh, really ask him some hard-hitting questions. But before that, what do you think about all these OnlyFans women finding Jesus, Lila? Yeah, what a beautiful thing. Isn't it glorious? Praise be to Jesus. Praise God. Absolutely do. I just think there's a lot of OnlyFans models who currently identify as Christians, and that's a little strange. Well, we can't gatekeep Jesus. So. Yeah, that's well, exactly. No, yeah, yeah why are you gatekeeping Jesus? <laughs> I'm not gatekeeping. I just said it's a little strange. Well, I feel like if you had the Holy Spirit, yeah, I feel like if strange? you had the Holy Spirit in your heart, you would feel a little guilty showing your butthole online. Well, what maybe some people have to go through that before they get the Holy Spirit in them. I wouldn't at all. I wouldn't. For that much money? No. With that. Yeah, maybe for $9 million. I think Holy everybody Spirit can be redeemed. Out. Well, speaking of $9 million, let's play a little clip of Nala Ray talking about all the money she made by selling her butthole online. And I came to that point, that conclusion, that, you know, I was making millions and I didn't feel any different. Yeah. I could buy anything that I wanted and I still felt the exact same. And that, that feeling that I was feeling was empty. You know, all that numbness was empty emptiness, like complete and total emptiness and unaware of that for sure. But loneliness, emptiness, not feeling fulfilled. You know, I was like a creator and I was like, oh, I'm being creative, but that's such a lie. Like that's not creative to spread your legs. It's not. Lila, is it creative to spread your legs? Uh, no. It's not? It's not creative. It's it's a thing that, you know, it's been the profession that a lot of people have been doing since the dawn of time. It's in the Bible. It's the oldest profession. Yes. Yeah. So what do you have to say about that? I mean, I, I don't know if that's going to discourage many girls from joining OnlyFans <laughs> when she said I could buy anything I wanted when so many people are struggling financially right now that can't even buy groceries. You know, it's really funny you say that because that's the same thought I had. I'm like, for the average woman that's watching this, she's like, $9 million. I put a, tw a poll on my uh, Twitter where I was like, would you join OnlyFans if you were guaranteed to make $80,000 in the first month, $9 million in the first year, then you can quit. 
What'd they say, yes? A lot of people said yes. What my was it? my two was options it? were yes, spread my cheeks, Lord, and no, I'm lying. <laughs> so everybody said yes. I mean, everybody has a price. I mean, look, Jimmy gets paid basically nothing, and he comes out here on a Speedo. Don't you think it's a little hypocritical, Jimmy, considering you wear, like, a Speedo and sing in front of the president's daughter-in-law? I mean, I do that for free, though. Or Olive Garden gift card, excuse me. <laughs> Olive Garden gift card. Please do not discredit the Olive Garden. Wait, yeah. so it's okay if she was doing it for free? I mean, I, don't, I think that would just be a poor financial move, just like what I'm doing. Yeah, well, you're not very smart, Jim. But it wasn't exactly. a poor financial move for her. She made $9 million. Yeah, you said if you were doing it for free. That was the... Jimmy, you got to work on your debating skills, Jimmy, because you guys didn't Lila know... just said, they said, if you do it for free, would it be okay? And I said, that'd be a dumb decision. She said, well, she wasn't doing it for free. She did it for $9 million. So she just argued a, de a premise that she didn't offer at the beginning. Jimmy thinks he's a master debater, which he is a master something else, <laughs> mm. because he has his first debate on million... What, what, uh, modern, modern day, day debate. debates. Yes, of course. Tomorrow. I don't know why I was thinking million or dollar extreme. So, and what are you debating, Jimmy? I am putting on my nerd hat. I'm debating, is Christianity true? And it's me and another pastor, and we're debating two atheists. A guy named Max the Atheist and then some other guy. I See, his James name. went easy on you. Usually, w when it's like a Christian debate, you have to debate like some radical Islamic guy. So he really gave you uh, a soft. Yeah, th that would have that would have been interesting. Yeah, because all you got to do is just talk to him about evolution. They're gonna be like, "We did evolve from pond scum," but basically, you know, I think that's where you can him them up a little bit yeah we'll see it should be good content you're gonna lose all right uh and we have another clip look at this other uh only fans nala ray talking more about all the money she made by spreading legs how much money do you have at this point at this point i had grossed nine million that is <laughs> a lot of money yeah but man that was the biggest point of all of this was like money doesn't matter it did not bring me Matters true little. joy. Like, you can be happy. Like, oh, I just got a new bag. Cool. But that's not joy. Like, the joy yeah. that the Lord gives you is like, well, one, he says it's your strength. But the joy that I have now is nothing compared to worldly happiness. What do you think, Lila? I mean, I think it's really easy to say that you know, money doesn't buy happiness after you've had a lot of money. Maybe it's like a way to trick poor people into thinking it's okay. I guess, but you know, it is. there is something true about that, though. It's like once she, when she got all that money, she probably thought like all of her problems would be solved. And I'm yeah. guessing it probably created even more problems because you know, now she More has, money, more problems. That's what they say. I know, and it sounds like it's a joke, but I think that's a real thing because with money comes responsibility and yada, yada, yada. All right, uh, uh, so what do we think? Is she saved, Jimmy, or is she going to go back to uh, spreading her legs? You know, I'm just going to think positive. I think she's yeah. saved. What's the over-under? One year... That she's doesn't she still have the OnlyFans technically? Is that I think she finally research? deleted it. Yeah. But, uh, she deleted she, it. She's so we creating have that confirmed. a Christian TikTok agency. Jimmy, you should sign up. Yeah, why don't you sign up? You suck at TikTok. That's like, that's the one thing I'm good at. <laughs> I love TikTok and the Savage Dance. Boo boo boo. That's all I did. In do Renegade. Do Renegade. Renegade. <laughs> Renegade, renegade, something like that. Jimmy, you're not beating the gay allegations <laughs> by yeah, doing TikTok gay dance. No, I'm therapy. bad at dancing. That's that's actually proof that I'm not um, gay conversion <laughs> therapy work. You never did renegade? You never did the renegade? No, I did the savage dance, and it was so bad that I just retired immediately. Okay, all but right. That's got, boring as hell. Uh, uh, nope. What are we reading? Go read for? the teleprompter. Guys. We have a major announcement. We're starting a brand new Monday night show exclusively on blazetv.com. We need 100 people to sign up before we can officially start. But guys, it's only 99 cents for the first month. Yeah, you can't beat that price. So go to blazetv.com slash primetime and use the code primetime99 to see our Monday show and other exclusive content. Guys, it's basically free. If you can't afford a dollar, uh, you shouldn't be watching the show. You got to go out there and open an OnlyFans. Even though we're anti OnlyFans at this point, if you don't have a dollar, right? I think you, I hope you get nine million people to subscribe. That uh, would be that it. would be good. I think that would save my job. I that think that good. would be. I think it's possible. Anything is possible. Well, and, and uh, for the chat rats, Blaze TV is completely uncensored. So uh, any topics that YouTube tries to suppress, we're going to talk about there. It's going to get weird on Mondays. I'll just say that much. It's going to get very, very, very weird. Um, 
borderline sketchy, I would say. Very sketchy. What do you think about that, Jimmy? Um, you know what? It's what I signed up for. So it might be scary at times. I might be no nudity. No nudity. No but nudity. Wait, what? Yeah, no nudity, but oh, almost <laughs> basically mental nudity in a way. Mental nudity. Just a nipple, maybe. Implied nudity. Implied nudity. So if you guys want to see the implication of nudity, make sure to sign up at blazetv.com slash primetime. Your first month is only 99 cents because I'm a pimp on a blimp. I'm the Stein Man 99 man, always on the grind man. And I always want to shine, man, and I need an audience to shine for. So come and sign up. BlazeTV.com slash primetime. Okay, also, we got to pay the other bills. My best friend, Tim Poole. We love Tim. He has this delicious uh, coffee brand, CashBrew.com. Born of a desire for a bold coffee and a need to build companies that actually support American values, Cash Brew Coffee provides an alternative to the faceless corporate ecosystem and fosters a parallel economy that actually supports freedom. Try my own personal blend. It's Alex Stein's Primetime Grind. It's 100% dark roasted, 100% organic ground coffee with two times the amount of caffeine. It's the strongest coffee that you can legally buy in the United States of America. However, this will not protect your eyes from extensive damage to your corneas if you look exactly right at the solar eclipse without glasses. Why are we, isn't the solar eclipse yesterday, Jimmy? I, I know, just keep reading. I wanted to be like Donald Trump and stare directly at the sun. But for the six hours following, I was blinder than Ray Charles at a fish factory. What is it? Why, what is fish factory? Why, why? I don't know. Just visit Casbrew.com, promo code PRIMETIME, to save 10% off your purchase. That's Casbrew.com, promo code PRIMETIME. And always remember to drink your coffee responsibly. You don't want to get too jacked up and you're driving. I would also caution... Uh, before drink, I wouldn't drink too much of this before you operate heavy machinery. Isn't that right, Jimmy? Yes, because you'll do it a little too. You get a little jittery and <laughs> shake it. And, uh, and you start making weird turns mm -hmm. and Lord knows what. But yeah. if you do need a little pick-me-up and you don't want to use methamphetamines, I would say that this is a good substitute. Would you agree on that? Absolutely. Can't beat that. Mm -hmm. no, it, it'll, it'll jack you up, increase your productivity, but it can also be dangerous, so use wisely. We love a little danger on this show. Okay, are we ready for our guest? Oh, we have the solar eclipse sot and then another ad read. Another solar guess. eclipse sot? Yeah, because Sonny Hostin from The View said the, the solar earth is eclipse flat. is caused by... She said the by... earth is flat? She's getting uh, close. She's getting close, yeah. But she did say the solar eclipse was uh, caused by climate change, and we had that what? clip. We wanted to react to it, if that's okay. okay. Play. Yes, I'll allow it. Thank you. Leaving, we've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've got she the earthquake. Down the she ran down the hallway. <laughs> the and rapture then, is here. The rapture's here. And then also, I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Oh, I love for the, the first time <laughs> in cicada, like cicada. no, 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 no. Two That's, different. No, two, no, well, they, this is what I read. There's two, two different there's times. Two are, different kinds of cicadas. Yes, two different coming. times. Times are coming. The good cicadas but, and the bad. But no. for the first time <laughs> in in many many years. No, seven every seventeen years this happens. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe. <laughs> but, you know, maybe well, you know better. I, but in I a way, say all those all those things together would maybe lead one to believe that you know either climate change exists, that's or more something is returning. Earthquakes are not at the mercy of climate change. It's underground. No. It can't. I don't it, think it, that's it happens. And, and, the, and the, kind of the eclipse. They've known about the eclipse coming because eclipses happen. Yeah, they can. It's actually not a prediction. It's actually a postdiction because. The sun, moon, and stars move in a pattern in the sky, so that's how we're able to know when an eclipse is happening. So it has nothing to do with climate change. As a matter of fact, they know when the next eclipse is going to happen in the year 2040. Uh, so she's an idiot. I mean, you have to be really stupid to have, you know, Whoopi be the voice of reason. <laughs> I don't know if she was. And then Joy Behar is like, it's cicada, not cicada. It's like, who gives a damn? Tomato, tomato. I, mean, I wonder what book she read that she was referencing. She can't read. That's a good point. <laughs> well, who can't read, Joy or Whoopi? Uh, probably any of them, to be honest. I know that cons fake conservative one can't read a damn book. Definitely Sunny. What's the fake conservative? Is Alyssa? Uh, Alyssa Fair Griffin. She's a big fan of yours. She so. has a crush on me. She yeah. wants she wants some primetime 99 loving. But guess what? I'm a taken man. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Alyssa. I know your heart is broken. Yeah, well, okay. and then there was one more great take about this. Uh, Sheila, Sheila Jackson. Jackson. She was almost the mayor. She was almost the mayor. She's not a congresswoman anymore, though. So, what, so she's just an individual? I mean, she's... She's introduced as Democratic Rep Sheila Jackson. Maybe she was a former rep. She, yeah, former rep, I believe. But she talked about how the moon is made of gas. Okay. Um, 
but... I mean, a lot of people say cheese. I don't know if that's true. A lot of people say a lot of stuff about the moon. Uh, a lot of people lie. Uh, and, you know, it's very weird about the eclipse. And I say you couldn't see the moon before it was blocking the sun. That was weird. That is pretty weird. I never thought about that. It just appeared out of nowhere. Yeah. So what do, what do you think it could have been if it wasn't the moon? What was it? Well, it's called, uh, I think it's Neruba. There's supposedly a third celestial being, Jimmy. And I don't know if this is true. Uh, it could be. You have to look it up. I think it's called, look it up on your phone while I talk about it. Neruba, Neriba, and it's the black planet. Supposedly there's a third uh, celestial being that we cannot see. Mm -hmm. And that is what uh, traverses in front of the sun. Because the official story is that the sun is 400 times larger than the moon and that it's exactly 400 times away. And that's why it makes a perfect circle. Yet our perspective, from our perspective, the sun and moon look exactly the same, the same size in the sky. Did you know that, Jimmy? Yeah, it's actually, it's a one like a one in a trillion chances, mm -hmm. basically, based on other celestial bodies in our solar system and galaxy. So. Alex, did you say Naluba or Naruba? Naruba, I think. Well, Naruba is coming up as a fictional African country. I think it's it's Nibiru. Nibiru, <laughs> sorry, uh, Nibiru. Tomato, Thank tomato. you, chat. Oh my gosh, you're trying to freaking burn me because I don't know Naruba, Naribu, whatever. Whatever. What did it say about that, Jimmy? <laughs> uh, we're Googling it. Nibiru is the planet that the Anunnaki are coming back with. Exactly. And Hotep yes. Jesus is part of the Anunnaki, so we should be talking wow. to him about this. Is he? On, can we get him on the show? Well, yeah. we'll do the Adri, then we'll get him. After the okay. Act. All right. As our nation and culture sink deeper and deeper into an immoral quicksand, it's obvious men have lost their way. We're not the righteous and courageous leaders America needs now more than ever. We've lost our willingness to sacrifice for the betterment of mankind and in service to the kingdom. That realization inspired Jason Whitlock to create the Fearless Army and its annual roll call event. It's an all day men's summit in Nashville, Tennessee that invites believers to fellowship together across our superficial differences and adopt the mindset and strategies that will allow us to conquer the demonic forces tearing apart this country. Jason is partnered with country music superstar John Rich for Roll Call 2.0 presented by Preborn on Saturday, June 1st in Nashville, Tennessee. Come for the great music, great food, and fellowship and be transformed by the biblically inspired messages delivered by Jason, Glenn Beck, North Carolina Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, Pastor Hugh Jackson, and many, many more. As it says in Hebrews, godly men must come together and encourage each other toward love and good deeds. Go to fearlessarmyrollcall.com to reserve your spot today. Fearlessarmyrollcall.com. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Now, speaking of Jesus, we have, and they actually said Jesus was a black man. I kind of tend to agree on that one. We welcome on the one, the only, Hotep Jesus. Hotep. Yeah, yeah. What's up, bro? What the heck? What's <laughs> happening, dude? I'm on the road, man. The earthquake and the eclipse took out my internet, so I ain't got no internet at the crib, bro. It's it's hard out here for a hotel. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because during the eclipse, I was actually live streaming, and all of a sudden, the internet did kind of go, you know, in and out during that eclipse, so something weird is happening. What do you think happened? Do you think we opened up a portal to hell, and now the demonic beings are taking us over spiritually? Um, it Quite possibly. I thought it was just racism. <laughs> well, they call it a black hole sun. You know, that that's, it could be racist. That could be, a, you know, the racist version of the sun. It sounds like a black hole. Well, 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 I heard you earlier talking about my ancestors, the people of Nibiru. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to clear the air on that. Um, Nibiru is definitely of uh, black people origin as well as the Anunnaki. And white folks is created by Yaku. Just to be clear. Thank you, Jimmy. Did you write that down, Jimmy? Yes, I wrote it all down. Okay, because they looked at me like I'm so crazy because I know so much information. Jimmy, you can learn. You a said thing it was two. Nerubu, though. Yeah, you gave me the wrong name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I said Nibiru. It. Okay, I said it incorrectly, Nibiru. Jimmy. Nibiru. I'm sorry, Nibiru. I, I don't. <laughs> I'm just trying to do a damn TV show, not have a uh, Nibba. What did you say? I can't. We're gonna get in trouble. For this, this is it sounded like you said the N word, Alex. No, Be I said Nibiru. <laughs> this is what I said. No, I want you that. said you said Nigaru. No, I didn't. Speaking of that, even though we want to get into the grifties, actually, fast forward to a, one of our good friends, Sam Tripoli, getting canceled. Let's play this clip. Uh, uh, anybody here? Pronouns? Oh, what's your pronouns? Okay, I respect your pronouns. You gotta respect my pronouns. 
Do you want to know my pronouns are? Yeah. My pronouns are real <laughs> That's my pronouns. <laughs> hey, if we want to play make-believe, let's play make-believe. I just want to apologize on behalf of all white people uh, that that happened, Hotep. So Sam's a friend of mine. I know that he didn't mean to hurt you so bad with those words. Yeah, I'm gonna have to condemn yeah, Sam Tripoli there. That is uh, absolutely unacceptable behavior. And um, he is disinvited to the fifth annual uh, Grifties until further apology. <laughs> no! Oh, we have Lila Hart here. Can we show Lila? Lila, obviously a, a, a grifter, a nominee, award what's nominee. Up? Uh, what's hey, Lila, do it's you agree or disagree with me? Okay, I'll explain to you why I have to disagree, even though I love you so much. The joke is very good because he's explaining how ridiculous it is for him to call himself a real N-word because they and them is ridiculous. That's what he means by it. That's what he's talking about. You're not allowed it's to make sense. You're not allowed to make sense in 2024, Lila. <laughs> yeah, no, Lila, that, you're racist. And she's Filipina, so can she say the <laughs> N-word? Actually, she does. She can. Yeah. She's, but she, yeah, she's I'm a, a little real nigga. nigga. So <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> We're gonna get canceled. I'm a mega. Hey, Lila, don't say that. saying that. Oh my gosh. Lila, are you fucking kidding me? Don't say that. Hotep, it's funny. Last episode you were on, it was where you got the drop of Charleston White, and we got canceled hard for that episode. We got immediately got a strike for that Charleston White episode. So it's good to have you back. I hope we don't get a strike for this one. She's dropping M bombs. No, we really did. Hotep, we really did. Wow. Damn. No, I don't think you'll get one this time around. Um, you should be safe. I think it was some of the other things you were doing in the episode that was definitely uh, strike worthy. But you should be safe this time around. Okay, we're trying to play it safe. You know, everybody's trying to cancel me, dude. What do you think about this right versus left? And I know that you're tweeting about how it, there really is a concerted effort to, I guess, uh, disillusion the connection between white people and black people. I mean, I think it's on all sides. So explain this tweet and what you mean by it, Hotep. So the code of the matrix, the code of the matrix basically says in order for the powers that be to maintain power. Oh, we might've lost Hotep. Hotep, oh. the internet is going. The matrix holds. It, is, is it working now? A little going, bit. You're going in and out. One, two, one, two, one, two. Is it coming back? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, yeah, talk is about the code of the matrix. One, two, one, two. Okay, so yeah, the code of the matrix basically says that uh, in order for the powers that be to maintain control, they must keep whites and blacks separated. So that is like a, a, a constant, uh, a constant uh, in, the, in the algorithm of life. So this year we saw. Uh, the absolute failure of the, or we've been seeing the absolute failure of the Biden administration and blacks have been leaving the Democrat plantation in droves and they're coming over to the right and then the right has decided to take up dog whistle racism, complain about DEI, act like DEI benefits black people. It doesn't benefit black people. It benefits everybody else except black people. Uh, it benefits people who are a part of the rainbow. Uh, mm -hmm. But anybody who's straight or conservative it does not benefit straight and conservative people. That's just, just the facts of the matter. So this is more of an ideological thing, more than a, a racial thing. And, uh, you know, so the right has chosen to basically try and keep the, the, the matrix, um, this code of the matrix alive by um, putting black people in the crosshair. And it's just a huge misstep. But again, I believe it's just because that's part of the code of the matrix. If the left isn't acting racist, then the right has to act racist to maintain that code. And that's what we're seeing today. When all the right has to do is shut the hell up and, we, and then Trump gets in the office, um, easy and sure. You think Trump's gonna be able to get in? You don't think they're gonna try to rig it again? Uh, I think he's got a strong possibility. Um, it, it's looking like a, a strong victory, but with the way the right is moving, it's just, it's not making the race as easy as it could be. Well, yeah, and I think you and I align more with like the libertarian values, but explain what are the biggest, you know, missteps the right's doing right now, considering the election is in seven months. Talking about everything that doesn't matter. 
<laughs> right. The, and, 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 and allowing the left to control the conversation right now, everybody's talking about abortion and this is like, bro, we need to be talking about money. We need to be talking about economics. Um, everybody's, you know, consumed with the border. And, um, I think that's a very important issue, but you know, uh, I would say most of the grifters on the right have done a poor job, like, uh, you know, complaining about black pilots, right? Like, for instance, yeah. all the black pilots and Boeing and all this other stuff that doesn't matter. Man. It's just like, yo, like, just shut up so we can get this election in and the price of eggs can go back down. No, and, and is this racist, though, to say that I actually like a black pilot because I feel like black people make the best bus drivers, they're the best, most athletic. I mean, no, they are. They can drive. I mean, I'm just saying black people are the most athletic. Wasn't that who you want as a pilot? Like, what? What's the movie with Denzel Washington? He flew the plane upside down, dude. I mean, that's the yeah. that's only you can only do that if your skin is a well, certain here's color. The thing. Here's the thing: if you see a black guy as a pilot, he's probably the best of the best yeah. because yeah. that's just something that's that true. black people are are not gonna do, right? Like, it's like anywhere from fifty to one hundred thousand dollars just to go to pilot school, right? Then you count all the hours, et cetera, et cetera. So if a black guy has woken up and decided, hey, I want to be a pilot. He's probably really dedicated to that craft because most of us, we're not thinking about flying no damn airplanes. That's a, that's a very good point. I think, now, I think you won that debate right there. And it's probably harder to make it too for whatever reason because, you know, probably more people doubt you or I don't even know what it is. But obviously you have to want to become a pilot if you made it that far. So, yeah, I think by the time they're flying the plane, I mean, but then what about a Nigerian scammer doing using a fake pilot's license? What, what about that, Hotep? I don't even know how you get on a plane with uh, that. Catch me if you can. Leonardo DiCaprio did it, and now I hear some Nigerians are trying to fly some American Airlines planes and do some stuff. Have you heard that rumor? Well, that wouldn't that wouldn't fall under DEI. That would just fall under hijacking, I believe, and <laughs> and just straight scammering, right? Yeah. Um, look at me. I am the captain now. Type stuff, right? Um. But that wouldn't be a, a DEI hire unless they were able to hack into the databases of American Airlines or something like that. Do you think pirates, uh, is DEI affecting the pirate industry? Because I feel like all pirates are black now. They're all Somalian. <laughs> Have white people been <laughs> Yo, the, pushed the history out? Of, the history of pilots is, is actually um, very interesting. You know they had black pirates? Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard that the other day. Somebody told me that there, there's actually black pirates like in the pirate ship days. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, th th that was a that was a big thing. Um, I can't remember his name, but I think it was Black something, Captain Blackfoot, Blackbeard, Black. No, what was it? no Blackbeard was somebody else. I I I, I probably screwing this all up. Anyway, um, yeah, I can't remember who that was, but yeah, that was definitely a thing, man. I, I want to make a joke about not being able to swim well, but I don't want to get canceled, so I'm just going to pass on that. I'm all the pirates, Well, you know why black people can't swim, right? They can swim, and you they swim why? better they, than they, us. They, 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 That's racist of you to say. Hotep, can well, you swim? Why, why? Can you swim, Hotep? Yes, he can swim. He's internationally known. He's a celebrity. But there's a reason why black people have trouble swimming compared to white people is because we have a higher bone density. Oh. oh, so they sink. So, so, so what? Yeah, we sink faster. White people float more easier. Than, what about than Lizzo? Black people, so is is, is that why Lizzo can't swim because her bone distance, bone density issue? I don't know. You're gonna have to ask SeaWorld. Ah. <laughs> but um, bon. what's the deal with Puff Daddy? Did him and Meek Mill uh, do gay stuff together? <laughs> Um, I cannot say for certain if him and Meek Mill, but there's definitely something dirty about Diddy. I can't quite put my finger on it, but um, he's guilty of something. Well, Jesse Waters is saying in, that he's an informant or something. Do you think that could be possible, that he like works for the feds? That's what, that's what Ye said. Ye said he was a fed. You know, I used to be in the industry, and I got to tell you, I've never been to a Diddy party or anything like that, but... Seeing behind the curtain of the music industry, there's definitely demons afoot and like lurking around every corner. So I became very religious after um, and spiritual after leaving the music industry. And I've never been to a Diddy party. So, you know, I could have only imagine what a Diddy party would look like if I went to the mild ones and saw demons.
Yeah, they had pink cocaine. I didn't even know about pink cocaine. Did you hear that, Lila? That's what they were selling. Pink cocaine. Pink That's cocaine. what the guy. The, you see, his his dealer was a white basketball player for Syracuse, and one of the reasons they arrested him is they said that he was selling pink cocaine. That's what they said. I don't know if this is true or not, but I want to play this clip of one of the greatest rappers of all time, DMX, and how they honored him. You already know what time it is. Got the whole pack out here. You heard? Here we go. Old pack outside, you heard? Earth in peace, DMX. We outside, heavy, heavy. Take my motherfucker still pulling in. Look at this. We got everything outside, everything. And, um, you know, X is. Let's give it to X because he stayed true to himself and to it. He never sold out. He never sold out, man. He kept it real to the casket drop. You know what I'm saying? You don't get real cats like that, man, that, that represents to the beginning, to the to the end. He ain't sell out. He wasn't going to money. He couldn't buy him. He couldn't do anything. It was all about love and about family. You know what I'm saying? Loyalty and love. All that. Put our, all ours up, man. Let's put our hands up, man, for all our fallen soldiers, man. You know we lost a lot of our family, man. This is bigger than just one of us, man. The dog is our well, is our bloodline. Moment of silence for everybody, man, that we lost. Brothers, you know. Was DMX the last non-gay rapper to ever be popular? Hotep. He's definitely the last of a dying breed. Uh, I cannot tell you how missed DMX is. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw DMX live uh, perform um, one night. I did too. I saw him live. Amazing, him amazing years. energy. It, yeah? It, it, yeah, no, I did. I um, saw him when he was in California in like 2011. Like right when he got out of rehab, it was like a huge deal. And DMX had his demons, but he was one of the best ever. I mean, it's dark and hell is hot. I remember when that album came out, Rough Riders Anthem. Uh What's the deal? How would you compare DMX back then to the people that are out today? Wow. Well, here's one thing you have to understand about DMX is he was very much into religion, mm -hmm. right? And he would, you know, perform these great prayers before his performances, after his performances, in like some of the odd places. So I think a lot of people that are not familiar with him could connect with him at least on that level. But compared to the artists today, I mean, you can't even compare the 90s rappers to the end of the day. Oh, we cut out. Are you there, Hotep? Last thing we heard hey. you said 90s rappers compared to today. Uh, can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Now can we're you? getting you back a little. Okay. Yeah. So, 90s versus today. So, so. So what became what came what was popular before hip hop was um like disco, right? Disco, club, house, all these things, right? Yeah. So we're kind of going full circle and getting that type of hip hop where it sounds more appealing for the club and dance, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not mad at the current state of hip hop. It's just a little bit more fun and less serious. I think the nineties was coming out of a, a very hotep type feel because the mid 90s was very hotep in hip hop there was a lot of praise for ancient egypt and africa and then it started to get a little bit more commercial but it was still gritty and street and then 2000s it just really blew the door off commercial rap 2000s was like all commercial rap and it's never really been the same so you're gonna you can't really like compare dmx to the new rappers these days it's just you know, the, the kids these days aren't even really looking for lyrical content. They're looking for fun, right? They're looking for beats. They're looking for a cadence and a rhythm. Uh, DMX had all of that, but he had lyrics and he had stories and scenarios. It was it was a different vibe, man. DMX was special. He was the best. And DMX, you got to remember, 
He dropped two number one albums in the same year, yo. Yeah, I know. It's Dark and Hell is Hot, and I think it was Rough Riders Anthem, right? Weren't those the two? or? Uh... No. Um, it's Dark and Hell is Hot, and then the second one was um, Flesh of My Flesh. Yeah, blood Flesh of My Blood. Yeah, that's what it was. But Rough Riders Anthem was on that one. Jimmy, what does DMX it's stand for? There. Don't tell uh, him. Uh, do more Zan X. Dark Man X. Okay. Dark Man X. <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> it, why... It, he did have drug issues some at some point, but let's well, not. Well, I mean, maybe privately it was do more Xanax. You should probably start doing some Xanax. Okay, no, uh, I do. Uh, Jimmy's just way too white for that question. I know he's he went to Princeton. He's white as hell. He's like white, the white, super white. Do not say that you're super white. You sound like a freaking white supremacist. Okay, let's not say that, Jimmy. Okay, well, start just saying a little that you're part white. Latino. All right, actually, as a matter of fact, he's he's. he's He's whiter than a dude sitting next to him that's Irish. Who's that Irish dude sitting next that's to him? That's Brandon. Whiter. He went to BYU. I, I know Brandon knows DMX work. Oh, Absolutely. for sure. He, he DMX grew up is in one LA. Of, DMX is one of the greats, dude. No, oh, I love DMX. See? Go give it to you. Okay, shut up, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm about to come there and choke you. Now we got to ask Hotep because we only have him for a little bit longer. Candice versus Ben. Who's the real winner? I mean, what, what's your – you're the jury. You're the judge. We all lose. We yeah. all lose. Like nobody, no. First of all, nobody. We get his voice. That's first of all. Second of all, Candace need to go take care of her kids. <laughs> and um, I'm first. I don't give a shit what's going on in Palestine. Oh, you're cutting out. Wait, hold on, Hotep. You're you're going concerned with you, Iran. You're going through a rough spot. Hold on, he's, he's about to. How are we America first? Go ahead. Can you hear me? How am I, got I doing you. here? I got you. Now you're you know, on. How are we? How how are we America first? But we want to hear a debate between uh, you know two irrelevant people uh, about Israel, Palestine, and Iran. It has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with us. I'm America first. I don't give a shit what's going on over there. We got a border crisis. Babies is dying. Uh, the prices is, is are, are, are crazy in this country. Like, let's focus on home. But nobody wants to hear them, like, argue. Like, first of all, there should be no debates cross-gender. Like, I don't believe in cross-gender debates. Women should be debate women. <laughs> men should debate men, right? But maybe Ben wears panties, and that's why he wants to de- he, he's going to debate Candace Owens, right? Like, like, maybe Candace is more of a man than Ben, and that's why they're debating. But at the end of the day, nobody wants to hear that shit. Like, who's really going to listen? Like, I, like... I really have to question anybody that's going to sit down and listen to that debate. Like, I what will. substance is going to come from that? You know, you know what you're listening for? I know what you're listening for because everybody wants to hear about the dirt that happened at the Daily Wire. They want to do it personal. Now that I'm here for. If they're going to get dirty and personal and talk about all the shit behind the scenes at Daily Wire, I'm here for that. I don't give a shit about Ben talking about Israel. You know what I'm saying? And I don't care about Candace criticizing Israel. Like, like, I really don't care. Shout out to all my Israeli people. You know what I mean? We got uh, Passover coming up, Shalom, Mazel Tov, and all of that. No, and, and I'm very empathetic to my Israel people. I'm empathetic to the people that are, you know, struggling in Gaza. But I did think it was a little weird how Ben Shapiro and a lot of people, this might get me in trouble, but the World Central Kitchen, Jose, Chef Jose Andreas, you know, had seven humanitarian aid workers killed, and they gave the IDF exact location where they're going to be. They also had a car that was marked with multiple World Central Kitchen markings, and they killed them. Uh, and it's it's making me hard to side with a group of people that are killing bro. humanitarian aid workers. Shit happens. Collateral damage, bro. There's kids in Africa that can't find food. I'm sorry. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> we talk about humanitarian aid workers. Let's talk about the humanitarian aid workers that travel around the globe that rape people. Who's that? Go look it up. We got NATO workers get charged in Africa for raping people. We got Bill Gates spreading AIDS all over. Now, see, now I'm well, now, get Let's not say that. Bill Gates is the greatest American <laughs> ever. Uh, but there, that is weird because they did give a bunch of kids uh, vaccines. I don't know if you should say it. I don't want to get in trouble. And then kids yeah. did get bruised. <laughs> well, we can't say we anything about- medical misinformation on YouTube. We want to say that no, we love the no. FDA and everything they approve is correct and uh, safe and yeah. effective. No, you're absolutely. You're, but I mean, but but I mean, like it's seven people, right? They, hey, I, everybody wants to. Now, now, I'm not saying these people deserve to die. 
And I'm not saying it's a good thing that they died and, you know, shout out to their family and I'm sorry and weep tears and pray and all that bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. But it's seven people, right? Yeah. And the problem with, you know, people who try to be good is they try to p pick and choose which lives matter, right? Black lives um, matter, right? Oh, That's the, those are the most important lives? It, you see what I'm saying? Like, like, let's talk about the black lives, right? The black lives that truly matter. Hoteps, right? Like, fuck mm -hmm. them black liberals. Their well, no, lives no, don't we matter. like they them too. We like all blacks. Worse. So we want to say that all blacks we love here <laughs> at Primetime with Alex Stein. Even the liberal ones. We love you just the same. Everybody's but, equal. But, but, but how do we prioritize which lives are lost and which ones are most important? Like, how do we do that? Is Are these seven more important than other lives? Like, it's like... Humanitarian crises happen every single day across the planet, and we go, oh, we should pay attention to these seven people. And it's like, I could point to a whole bunch of things happening. There, you know, there was like seven or eight coups happening right now in the, in the continent of Africa. Did you know that when they tried to install the CBDC in Nigeria, they basically told the people that their current currency was no longer any good, and the people started facing mass starvation. Um, they had to revert to the barter system. And then later on, they came back and said, you know what? My bad. You can use the old currency again. It's good. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about hundreds of thousands of lives being affected by a monetary policy. But seven people, you know, catch a little L and now I'm supposed to care. I don't care. I don't care. Shout out to Bibi. Shout out to Netanyahu. Shout out to Israel. Shout out to the IDF. Let's keep sending them. We send them, what, $10 million, $10 billion every year? I don't give a shit. Keep that money flowing. I don't give a shit. It's already in the budget. Shout out to Israel. I love Israel. Palestinians don't even like me, first of all. Like, let's just, <laughs> let's just start right yeah. there, right? That, like, like, like if we're going to really, really, really be honest, Arabs are the first enemy of African people. And I got Arab wait, friends. Wait, wait, wait. Time out. Time, well, no well, well, I do want to have this conversation, actually, because what well, I was just going to say, when you talk about the strife of Africa, there's actually modern-day slavery right now in Libya. Muammar, right now. Right now. And Gaddafi used to be in charge, and then we yes. basically armed rebels to overthrow him. And now the country's in such disarray, they actually have a slave trade. But Muammar Gaddafi, we said he was such a bad guy, but he actually built a dam that gave clean water to inner Africa to other countries that he didn't have anything to do with. With, and we blew up those dams in that water supply. Hillary Clinton laughed about it, but he's Arab. He didn't. He didn't dislike uh, Africans, so he seemed like he was. Nice That's Arab. what I'm saying. It's not all of them, right? Yeah. But the reason why he occupies that land is because centuries ago the Arabs came in and invaded Carthage, right? They invaded North Africa. And that's why most of North Africa is all Arab. Mauritania, Mali, uh, Mali, uh, half of Sudan. Um, the 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 uh, east coast of Africa, uh, Somalia, Ethiopia, all these places have been invaded by the Arab invaders. So when we go back centuries, or if I were to go back, matter of fact, if I go to Egypt, they don't like my black ass. Is that true? Have you been to Egypt? No, I haven't. Oh, I know. I, mean, I said seriously. Well, I mean, I don't know if you've been to eat. They don't like you. Yeah. Uh, There's the stories. There's the stories I hear. There's the yeah. stories I hear from homies that went. Some yeah. of my homies went and they like, yo, da, 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 right? And I've been on the continent of Africa. I know how they view people. And my thing is that, according to my experience, I've experienced more racism from the brown people than I have from white people, from the Arabs to the Indians. Uh, these people are some of the most racist people I've ever come across. Asians. I go into the spot to get an egg roll and his customer service is, it's like a half a star, right? They, so I, we <laughs> deal, nobody talks about star. how China has Chinese only restaurants and no niggas allowed and all of that. Right? Is that true? So, is that true? They, they have, they, they, they have, have a, a, whatever, a separate restaurant. Chinese only, Chinese only establishments. This is known fact, okay? This is known fact. It's well documented. Everybody should know this, right? So well, I know they got the Yulin to... Dog Meat Festival that they do during the summer solstice, June 21st, where they all eat dog meat, but they do oh, it year-round. But wow, I didn't realize they were uh, 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 they were into segregation like that. Nobody talks about the Holocaust of the Ukrainians and the Holodomor, right? Nobody talks about how Poland got squeezed into, you know, however many wars over there in Eastern Europe. Nobody cares about Polish people. Nobody cares about the Ukrainians, right? 
Well, now we do because there's an incentive, right? Mm -hmm. But my point is, who gets to decide the lives that have the highest priority? If you ask me, if it ain't American lives, I don't give a shit. And if, you, and if you're going to care about those seven lives, I'm going to need you to care about the, the, the slaves in Libya created by the Obama administration. I'm going to need you to care about the people impacted by um, the medical regime out of Stanley Plock and Dr. Fauci and Gil Bates. I'm going to need people to, 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 to care about the war in Sudan the um the several coups happening all on the african continent like like let's something we can always pinpoint something going wrong so you tell me about seven people i go i don't give a shit hey that's a fair point that's a fair point and like i said i am empathetic to israel too i think october 7th is bad i just i i mean i'm anti-war i don't want people dying is, is how i feel okay real quick abel hurry is abel awake or is he asleep i love how i want abel if you hate Abel's, Israel, you have to hate America. I don't Both hate Israel. Were conquered uh, the same way. Show, I'm just saying, if you do, show Abel. Abel, you fell asleep over there. Damn. Abel, you're dead asleep. Hotep, you've been listening to Hope. Come here on set real quick. Hurry, Abel. Hurry, hurry. Abel, so my show's so boring. Oh no, keep your mic so you can hear him real quick. I hurry. Have a mic. No, no, no. Grab your headphones so you can hear Hotep. I didn't hear anything. Hurry, 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 hurry. Is he a migrant? I was listening. No, okay, this is Abel Garcia. Abel here, look into this camera. This is Hotep. Abel is one of the most famous detransitioners. Did you know that? What do you think about the trans agenda, Hotep? Uh, welcome to America. Um, <laughs> wait, what? You gotta, uh, this I guy. Don't, I don't like them. Wait, wait, no, do not say that. You're gonna get in trouble. Abel, tell him about oh, how your genitals have atrophy from the chemicals I gave you. Ew. Uh, yeah. So I used to identify as a woman, and they gave they put me on so many drugs and a lot of other stuff <laughs> that my end my genitals have unfortunately atrophied due to everything that they did to me. What? Yes, Annie, you, you said... No, you don't got no dick? Oh, he... No, 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 I still have it. It's just super it tiny. <laughs> you got a dick that don't work? Technically, yes. I thought it works. Somewhat. That's got to suck. Well, he used to have breast implants, too, but no longer does he have those. What? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hotep, this is a famous Abel Garcia. You don't, you really, you've not heard about his story? About are, are, you, are you familiar with the eunuchs of history? Eunuchs? Eunuchs? I've heard of eunuchs. Yeah. yeah. You've heard of them? Yeah, that's, that's what this reminds me of. They tried to turn you into a eunuch. Yeah. In other words, they tried to do that. Did you freeze any mm, of your semen? Damn. No. Do you know if you have swimmers still? I'm on the phone call uh, with uh, medical professionals on that. So, can you sing? Yeah, do you sing well? No. You know they got the, uh, what do they call them? The uh, reverberados out of Italy. They used to chop the little boy's dick sauce so they could sing. What's I, I cannot again? sing. Try to sing a little. No, I cannot sing. Abel Garcia has an atrophied <laughs> penis, <laughs> but that doesn't matter. Cause he's not a woman anymore. He's a man. So you like the? Are you the first trans illegal immigrant? <laughs> he actually has cart. Tell him about your connection with the cartel. Hey, Alex, I already told you I can't disclose my family's uh, practice. He does have cartel connections, though, Hotep. So you need to be very nice to Abel. He's an incredibly great young man. That was confused. So he's like the gay El Chapo. Kind of, yeah. The I, trans. Hey, I can't talk about my uncle, okay? And he's not gay. You like chicks, right? Yes. Yeah. When he was a woman, tell him when you weren't lesbo, you were still into chicks. I, I was confused. I don't know what I liked back then. <laughs> I was so brainwashed, I don't even oh remember. And tell him you'd get on the dating apps? I don't think I was on any. Oh, that was, uh, that, that, was, that was Chloe and them there on dating yeah, apps. Chloe and Laura. <laughs> Well, Abel's a badass. I know that you would want to talk to Abel, give him a little shout out. Can you give him a little encouragement? Uh, and because I know you're a black man, you probably have a large penis. This is Abel. <laughs> Can you give him some of that BDE, big dick energy? <laughs> Pause. First of all, I'm not giving him no, no dick diddy. Energy. I'm no diddy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no diddy. No diddy, man. First of all, um, some advice. 
I mean, I never even met a trans person. I'm still like my stomach is turning right now. I don't even know how. <laughs> well, to... I'm a former trans person. Former. Man, once a trans, always a no! trans. No, tell him he's wrong, Abel. Uh, I have to agree with Alex. You're wrong. I'm no longer a trans person. But your dick don't work. It kind of works. It doesn't work as well. I'm working with doctors to try to get it back working. We might be able to revive his dead yes. penis. Go, here's what we got to do. I need you to go to menofwater.com. We have a supplement called Apex. It's for testosterone support. Maybe that'll help you Are out. You on I can't make any guarantees. I'm taking uh, some testosterone right now. He's on test right now. Is that? But do you think he should he should double stack with your? Uh, yeah, we have a natural stuff? approach. I don't know. I, I don't. I can't speak for certain. You know the vials of injections that they give you. Well, um, I'm, we have a natural approach. W wait, what? I was gonna say the testosterone supply, uh, vitamins that I'm taking are from Alex Jones. So wait, you're not taking real uh, wait, Alex what? Jones sells <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> what do you mean Alex Jones sells? I know he sells pills. That, yeah, that's what I'm taking. Yeah, but you're taking over the counter. You're not taking. <laughs> It's yeah. not prescribed. Yeah, I, I don't take. Uh, I don't take prescribed. Well, you should. Maybe Did he you test these on the gay frogs or something? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, do you think that maybe that the astrazine in the water could have turned you trans? Did you drink a lot of water as a kid, Abel? I don't know. That's a good question. You need to ask your abuela. Uh, my grandmother doesn't know. Uh, she's too. What's busy mom in Spanish, not. Jimmy? What's mom in Spanish? Madre. You need to ask Mama. your. Ma Mama or Madre, if you drank a lot of sink water. All right, I'll make sure. Straight. Did you ever drink from the hose as a kid? I think I might have drank a few. That's times. it. He drank from the hose, and so now he's on Alex Jones' supplements, reversing it all. So. And he's gonna be on Hotep's next. He's gonna be on Hotep supplements as well. No, he? he's not. Oh yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he, is. <laughs> he could be a before and after case. We show him yes. now with his penis atrophied. Then he takes your medicine for two months, and it, he's hanging wang. He's got a big dong. What is so bad about that? Menoforder.com, right? Yeah, hey, well, if it let's, works, let's, it, let's have it them, if it works, then we can talk about the results. You know, let's let's have you try out Apex. If it's working, then you know, let's talk. If it doesn't work, then fuck it. We tried. I think right. that sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah. Just send it to Alex and I'll and I'll try it. Yeah, send it send a bunch of we need extra strength and industrial grade. <laughs> And I'm, I'll make sure he takes. I'll make sure he takes twelve capsules every day. I'll text him. What time does he take the capsules? I'll take thirteen. He's got to take it with a meal. But it's, it's a suppository because he likes. He prefers suppositories. It, no. Uh, oh Lord. He, have he had, no, he has trouble swallowing. He does have trouble swallowing, so he needs it in suppository hey, form. Hey, Alex. I told you I didn't know how to swallow in the past. Come on. I know. That's what I'm saying. So do you have a rectal insertion <laughs> method where we can get it to him straight into his blood vein? <laughs> I'm going to leave that up to you, man. I ain't touching that. That's the best way to take <laughs> testosterone is through your anus. Oh, my Lord. Because your stomach, Jesus. the stomach acid will eat a lot away of it. Your booty juice doesn't do that. It absorbs it. So. <laughs> wow. I'm going to have to pray. I'm going to have to pray. After please this pray interview. for yes. Abel and I. Yeah, please. Okay. Now, all right, Abel, great job. Thank you. And we're going to get you the submits. We're going to turn him back into Yay. a beast. Okay, now we got to get into the Grifties. Let's show a couple of pictures of us three at the Grifties that Lila sent in. There I am, loving it. Pimp on a blimp. What other pictures you got? Lila, Lila and I, we're loving it. What else we got? Okay, that's it. That's it. We just want to pump it up. So, the Grifties, when can we expect them to come out? Everybody's uh, been uh, asking me. It's uh, Grifties.com. You can go watch them now. It's pay gated, and we'll probably release it within the next few minutes. But it costs five bucks to watch it. And it's I worth get it. My grift on. Guys, it's worth it. Go it pay five it. bucks it's because. You you can sell it real quick, then I'll sell it. No, it's it's an uh, amazing show. We had Alex Stein, who is the previous grifter of the year. We had a live show. I'm talking about like a show that goes off without a hitch. Absolutely amazing. Our team did a great job. Um, I can't wait to do it next year. Grifties.com. No, and it's an honor and privilege to let me be a part of it. Anything I can do to help, we're going to uh, you know spam the chat, and we're going to spread that. And before you go, Hotep, tell the people how they can find you and support you. Absolutely. Um, HotepJesus.com. Go to HotepJesus.com. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Rumble. I'm Hotep TV on Rumble. And, you know, I'm having a great time out here analyzing current events and keeping people on point, man. Is it racist to say it's hard to see you right now? Um, I wouldn't take, I wouldn't chance it. Okay, I won't say it. God bless you. Black Lives Matter. Thank you, Hotep, for being a great Bye, Hotep. Thank you. Bye, Lila.
Talk to you again soon, my friend. Peace. All right, later, bro. Thanks. All right. So, why do an ad read? He said a lot of crazy stuff. All right. Uh, yes. Have you ever wondered just exactly how it is that our politicians enter public service making moderate salaries, but then end up walking away with an astonishing amount of money? Where are all these tens of millions of dollars coming from, you might ask? We all learn from an early age that the best way to get rich in America was to get a degree, start a business, or maybe take a job on Wall Street to work hard and to save even harder so that we could make a better life for ourselves and for our children. Turns out it's way easier than that. All you have to do is get elected to Congress. <laughs> Join us this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern for a live pre-show event hosted by the one the only Glenn Beck and James Polis, followed by the live premiere of Bought and Paid for How Politicians Get Filthy Rich, streaming live on YouTube and Blaze TV. Head on over to youtube.com slash Blaze TV excuse me, youtube.com slash blaze TV to watch the live event. Subscribers can watch on blaze TV as well. We know it. Dan Crenshaw is trading stocks. He's the richest guy. This uh, documentary is going to piss off people on both sides. So we're going to do a lot of exposing. I am excited to watch it. Lila, what do you think about all these corrupt politicians? I think that they're horrible. You don't like them? No, I don't like them. But I want to say that was such a great interview with Hotep. It that was, was good. That was awesome. I'm a real mega. Stop saying that. Lila, you're going to get us canceled. Okay. Oh, wait, Alex. one more thing I wanted to say, too, yes. is that, you know, Jesus saves. Because if Jesus was able to save Abel from okay. being a woman, now he's back to being a man, then how can we not believe that he can save Nala from being an OnlyFans star to being a woman of Christ? I'm on her side. I feel like everybody's worthy of redemption, no matter how big the sin is. Jimmy, on a sin scale, what what is the worst sin? Murder? I would probably say... Being wait. Jimmy. Well, I didn't hear what Brandon said. What? Being Jimmy is probably the worst. Oh, what is yeah. the worst sin? Really? Murder? Um, <clears throat> or is rape worse than murder? I'm trying to think of things that wouldn't get us terms of service. Okay, well, well my point is... All the things Hillary Clinton did. Can a murderer be redeemed? Yeah. Yes. One was in the Bible. Okay, well then why can't a girl cross. that shows her boobs? And all sin is equal in the eyes of God, actually. So That's not true, I hope. It is true. That's what they say, <laughs> but that's... It's not actually true, right? It's just, just something they wrote. It's absolutely true because we're we're humans and we're not perfect. That's why Jesus. All had to come. sin is yes. the same. All sin is the same. That is why Jesus had to come down to earth and so die a, on the cross for all of our sins because it's all the same. Running a stop sign is the same as murder. Yes, it is actually. Can you verify that, Jimmy? Um, if you really want to get theological, every sin is the same in that. Any sin separates us from God, yes. but sin has different levels of consequences. Ooh, we got a $20 super chat Ooh. from Steven Fernandez who says not being a chat rat is the ultimate sin. Bing, bing, bing. Oh, we'll take it. All right, no, now let's plug this. Guys, all right, we're going to start doing a Monday show. We need 100 chat rats to sign up so we can get this thing greenlit. You're going to be able to go to blazetv.com slash primetime. You put in the promo code Primetime99, your first month is going to be 99 cents. Woohoo! So please join this, and the Monday night show is going to be uncensored. It's going to be crazy. I'm going to be the producer, not dumbass Jimmy. Um, so you know it's going to be no holds bar. I'm going to be sometimes IRL man on the street. Sometimes I'll be in studio. Sometimes we'll have guests. Sometimes we'll have call-ins. You'll never know what to expect on the Monday night show, except to expect the unexpected. That's the only thing you can expect. Lila. Well, Alex, Alex, yes. I want to jump off of that. It also gives you access to every Blaze TV original and exclusive content. And then when we do interviews, we can post it there first before we post on the YouTube. Wow. Like the Joe Exotic interview we filmed last week. We didn't post it till this morning. Oh, and, and speaking of, to cut you off, I'm supposedly a video chatting with uh, Joe Exotic tomorrow. <gasps> mm -hmm. What? Tiger King. Yeah, yes. again, live. But, oh. but and we can put in completely uncensored interviews when we talk about stuff that YouTube doesn't like. So it not only gets you the Monday show, it gets you a lot of other exclusive content. So we could have a real crazy conversation with Hotep, is what you're saying. I mean, we could get somehow weirder with Abel. Yeah, well, Abel loves to mix things up. That's why we love Abel Garcia. Abel, wait, 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 I want to go. Abel, you were seriously passed out like Abel, that is saying, Abel, asleep. run on set real quick. Hurry, <laughs> Abel. <laughs> Abel, you were dead asleep. What do you have to say about that? Is this show that boring that you're just I was not asleep. 
You were asleep. Shut now up. you're just lying. He was, you're literally he, lying. He I was literally you. You calling were your as, name. You were asleep. You were, you were basically snoring. Uh, in my defense, I've been up for like 13 hours. That's not that long. It worked takes 12 hours. <laughs> I thought you were going to say 23 hours. 13 hours. Yeah, I, I barely had three hours So you got up at 6 a.m. is what you're saying. It's 7 p.m. right now. You got up at 6 a.m. That's like a little early. Yes. It's a okay. little early. And you have Hisp you have Hispanic lineage. Those guys work forever. They never sleep, dude. I, I got the white version of it. I can tell. Extra yeah. white. All right. I, I'm sorry. The Spaniard blood in me conquered the Mexican side of me. Well, we love it you. It ain't the first time. We love Abel regardless. You're the man. Thank you, Abel. Lila, everybody go support Abel Garcia. Uh, tell the people where they can find you and support you, Lila. You guys can find me at lilahart.com and be sure to get your tickets to see us in Austin, April 26th. Right, I will be hosting. Alex Stein will be headlining. You guys can see JVT, and we are so excited to meet all the chat rat. Yes, official chat rat meetup. All you need is some chat rat merch, and uh, we're gonna be able to hang out after the show, get pictures, do Lord knows what. But I know it's gonna be insane. And then the next night is the Minds event, so there's a lot of stuff going on. And Thursday night we're gonna be going live from Austin as well, so be on the lookout for that IRL stream in Austin, Texas, on Thursday, April 25th. Then the comedy show the 26th and the mind event the 27th. So it's going to be an action packed three nights. I hope you guys are in Austin to, uh, you know, celebrate and enjoy the festivities with us. All right, Lila, we end the show the same way every time with a freestyle finale. DJ, hit that beat. Yo, this song is kind of sad. I don't know if I'm happy or glad. Abel Garcia, his dick is broken. No, I'm not joking, and weed is what we're smoking. CBD will get you high. Transgender version, it is a lie. Delta 9 is synthetic. It don't have a greed. I don't really know what I'm saying. Jimmy's looking at his phone like a dumbass. Jimmy needs to go back to class. Princeton is a really bad school. Everybody there is lame and gay. I don't know what else to say. Princeton is a universe of a bunch of lesbians and gays. And I love you, what can I say? Pimp on a blip and I do it all day. I don't know what I'm gonna say. 99 cents to go to the show and watch it unedited and uncensored. You know it's crazy. No, I'm not gonna be lazy. Going to spend the 99 cents and you know it's gonna be worth it cause you're gonna see me X-rated. And you know I'm gonna be cross faded. All right guys, a pimp on a blip. I love you guys, peace. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs>